Hello, happy woodworkers and DIYers. May Anna here with Heartwood Art, and today I'm going to share tips and tricks on two of my favorite woodworking tools the Craig Jig K4 and its little sister, the K3, for when things are too big to get into the K4. The Craig Jigs have absolutely revolutionized the way I join boards with pocket holes, not to mention how fast and fun and easy they are too, and I think you're going to love these tips and tricks. Hey, if you're enjoying these tips, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and come on over to heartwoodart.com for more woodworking tips, tricks, and builds. All right, let's dive in. Before we jump into the tutorial, let's determine which product you're using because there are multiple Craig jigs and they're not all set up alike. There's the Mini, the K3, the K4, and K4M and the K5. Now the K3 and K4 are set up alike and they're the ones covered in this tutorial. If you're using the Mini or K5, you'll want to reference other tutorials, not this one. Okay, let's see where the material depth guide is for the K3. It's on the bottom. Just squeeze the gray grippers on the side, then slide to match the notch of the material thickness to the arrow line. This one is set to one and a half inches for drilling into a two by four. And those sliders can be tough to move. I find trying to do one at a time with my thumb is the easiest. Now let's see the material depth guide on the K4. It's on the side of the top part that slides up and down and is held in place by a set screw. You can match the line to the edge of the assembly for the material thickness setting. This one is set to one and a half inches for drilling into a two by four. And note, from this angle, it looks like I have the line just inside the assembly edge, but when you're looking at it from the top, it's dead even. Okay, let's talk about the drill bit and collar, because it's super important to match your jig and drill bit to the right settings for your material thickness. First, let's identify the two parts of this that you'll use to determine the correct collar position. For the collar itself, push the inside of the collar against the frame of the guide. And for the bit length, match the end of the big part of the bit to the depth that you're going to need. Okay, let's look at the drill bit guide on the K3. It's located on the inside of the box your K3 came in. Now place the skinny part of the drill bit tip fully into the tip holder and then snap the bit shoulder into the middle holder. Then use the guide to set the inside of the collar to the correct depth. Now note that it has markings on both sides, so be sure to use the right one. The most common settings are on the left, and yes, the line between one and one quarter inch and one and one half inch is for both. The reason why is because you jump to a longer screw for the one and one half inch depth. Okay, let's see the drill bit guide on the K4. It's on both sides of the assembly. The most common settings are on the left, and as with the K3, the line between the one and one quarter inch and the one and one half is for both. The reason why, again, is because you jump to a longer screw for the one and one half inch depth. Now here's a rule of thumb for setting the jig and drill bit. When both materials to be joined are at least three quarter inch thick, the following general rules apply. Set the jig and the drill bit collar for the thickness of wood you're drilling into, and choose the screw length based on the thickness of the wood you're screwing into. Now when you're joining thin wood like half inch plywood or such, then those rules don't hold. And here's a super quick drill bit collar setup. Now for thin material, you can use this super quick trick, and I want to thank Jens Jensen for this tip on the Craig Forum post. But do not use this trick for material over one and one eighth inch thick. The reason why is because you jump to a much longer screw after that thickness. Okay, set the jig depth, then place a nickel under one of the hole outputs, and then drop in your bit and set the collar to that length. And here I've got a super settings chart for the most common wood that I use. Now this assumes you're drilling into the face of material one and screwing into the face of material two. And if you're doing face to end grain, such as a miter connection, 
then you're going to need to seek out other settings for that situation. And you can come to the post on heartwoodart.com to see this chart. Okay, let's talk about where to drill the holes on the K3. And as a general rule, drill with the grain, not across it, for the strongest joint. Position the K3 so that the end of the gray sliders are snug against the end of the wood that you're about to drill. I use a Craig clamp to hold the K3 in place. Now there are two such Craig clamps. One has far longer arms than the other, and it's the one shown here. The two flat ends of the clamp are different sizes. The big one slide fits into the K3. Now as for position, the K3 jig is about one and one half inches wide. The manual says to position the hole no closer than 9 16 inch from the edge of the material. Now with the edge of the gray slider flush with the edge of the wood, that puts the center of the nearest drill hole 9 16 of an inch from the edge of the wood. So if you're working on a narrow piece of stock, you can drill holes side by side without moving the jig. So for a one inch board, which is actually three quarters of an inch, place the jig in the dead center and drill both holes. For a two inch board, that's actually one and a half inches, the widest you can go would be to place the gray slider flush on one side, as shown here, and use the drill hole on that same side. Then repeat for the other side. Now, of course, you can always move more toward the center for each hole if you like to. Now for panels, you don't want to go more than six inches between holes. Okay, let's talk about where to drill holes on the K4. And again, as a general rule, drill with the grain, not across it, for the strongest joint. The holes you use depend on the width of your material. For a one by two board, mount it center between B and C and use those holes for drilling. For a two by four, mount it center to the jig and use holes A and C. Now for wider stock or down the side of a panel, mark a line on the stock where you want the center of your pocket hole and then line it up on the jig with the hole you want to use for drilling. Okay, let's talk about how to drill. And this may sound silly, but this is how the Craig manual says to do it, mainly for safety and to ensure you do not damage the bit or jig. With the drill still, place the bit fully into the hole until the tip touches the material and then back it up one quarter inch. Then turn on the drill full speed and plunge into the material. Now some folks find that going about halfway, then pulling the bit mostly out to allow the shavings to be cleared and then drilling the rest of the way seems to work best for them. And be sure to secure the jig. For the K3, I hold on to that clamp and then I put some downward pressure on the jig near the clamp to ensure that it stays into place. For the K4, I use the shorter arm clamp to secure it to my workbench, and I just rotate it to the side so it's not sticking out and in my way when I belly up to the jig. Now, since you're going to be drilling straight down on it, it's likely the jig won't move. Okay, let's talk about clamping material on the K4. Ensure that your material is properly secured on the K4 before you start drilling into it. And to adjust the clamp, loosen the lock nut, and turn the rubber foot to the desired length. When you bring the clamp handle down, you should feel it lock into position. It should be just enough pressure to hold the material securely. And once set, then tighten the lock nut against the clamp arm to hold that setting. Okay, let's talk about storing your Craig accessories. The K3 comes with the case, and honestly, that's the best place to keep everything. The K4 has some storage under the unit for the bit and wrench, but that's not exactly handy if you keep your jig clamped down. I find a square plastic tub works perfectly. It's long enough for the drill bits when placed diagonally, and the tub fits perfectly in my miter saw station cubby holes too. Be sure to come on over to Heartwood Art and see how I built this easy DIY miter saw station. Okay, happy pocket hole making. You should be all set to make your pocket holes with the Craig K3 and K4. Be sure to come on over to Heartwood Art and see some of the things I've made with my Craig jigs, including a miter saw station and a workbench. And I'll see you 
in the shop.